My name is Giovanni Casadei and I've been coming in Ocean City in uh, penning trips uh, since 2006, staying with my friends John and Nancy at their house. I'm very appreciative of this opportunity uh, to paint 10 hours a day landscapes, which is one of the Soviet mother that I love the most. He's been coming here for eight or nine summers, usually for two weeks or more. Just wonderful to see his beautiful artwork and to interact with him. He's just such a charming soul. In addition to the artwork, he cooks delicious Italian food for us. I'm John Thornton, the filmmaker, friend of Giovanni and Nancy Thornton's very attractive husband. It's just been such a pleasure to have Giovanni come all these summers. Perfect guest. He gets up real early, he goes out, rides his bike against the heavy winds. I don't know how he does it. He's just got so much stamina. He usually comes back with three, sometimes four, occasionally even five paintings. They're just beautiful. They're gems. Giovanni's work has evolved slowly over these years. But this summer, the changes have been more noticeable. Giovanni teaches painting at Fleischer Art Memorial in South Philadelphia. One of his colleagues is the painter John Sevchik, who taught a class in abstraction in 2014 that Giovanni took. Though Giovanni has worked almost exclusively from observation, trying his hand at abstraction seems to have given him new insights into landscape painting. John Sefcik teaches a class that is more about paint than uh, representation. So my goal in that class was uh, to paint bigger and uh, to paint non-objectively. As you listen to John Sefcik explain the ideas behind his class and look at Giovanni's work, both his abstractions and his landscapes, you will see how the expressiveness of paint and color can create a mood and transcend any style. Giovanni Cassidy and I were students of the Academy around the same time. We both teach at Fleischer Art Memorial, and Giovanni likes to take classes now and then to explore his abilities. One semester, he surprised me by taking my class called Painting Studio. I was quite nervous at first because Giovanni is by all measures an artist with a real career but I know I have helped other artists who are very good, so I didn't think it would be entirely useless for Giovanni to take my class. Well, he was the ideal student. He was earnest, open, respectful, communal, a delight in every way to me and his classmates. I recommend a form of drawing I call scribble drawing, which consists of exactly that as a beginning. What happens is that a mesh of light pencil marks based on one's own gesture and motion takes on some cloud-like form that the artist recognizes and develops more objectively after a while, stopping before becoming too obsessed with finish. This discovers visual matter that the hand and body and mind of the artist has created in tandem and from one's own original gesture. It may be realistic or abstract, expressionistic, minimal, anything that arises as one's own imagination. The method creates imagination on the paper or canvas, where it exists exterior to the mind and where it can be treated outside oneself. I consider the method very powerful 
in demonstrations I can locate things that really have been on my mind recently or remember them purely by the hand leading the eye. So Giovanni was game for this method right away. He painted what he would and he set up some very sound approaches in using color. He usually works pretty small on his plein air excursions, but these were all bigger. So the paintings were ambitious, courageous, and his intelligence and feeling was entirely wordless in its approach. That is not to say he thinks of the landscapes he does as words. But they exist outside of him, and while he mediates them, translates is the word we use, they have an objective hook outside of him. In his painting studio work, the origin of the paintings seem to also be translations and original imaginations, but they seemed steep in larger scale reflections. They were more metaphysical, religious, existential. I would notice things appear in his paintings and mention what seemed to be appearing to Giovanni. He would look and be surprised. Then he would sometimes support the evolving idea and sometimes not, which is also part of the method. One can cast the dice again, as it were, though I don't consider any of this actually to be random. I consider it to be as ready as verbal speech, and I support this contention partly on the fact that more of the brain is used to make art than is used to speak. The human figure was important in most of Giovanni's paintings from that class, but their situational presence seemed to confound him sometimes or make him work against them. These were charged paintings, and Giovanni reported that he thought a lot about them. Claire said to me that he was up at night and strangely excited by the class. When I saw his show at Gross McLeaf later, I didn't see any of those works but an acceptance of thicker, darker paint seemed to increase a dimension of his work. It seemed more grounded in mortality. I and Lynn both liked the show very much and saw a deep change. Giovanni is mortal and reflective. He writes very good poetry that demonstrates his concerns about time. So there's a chance I have only been privileged to look over the shoulder of someone who would have done this anyway, but he certainly took encouragement from something, the permission a class or an instructor or a friend give. I feel he might have done all those paintings without the class, but that was what happened. I still have vivid memories of the entire matter. So I think the experience in the abstract paintings, it gives me more freedom uh, uh, for a great interpretation of nature. Sometimes uh, images from nature itself, what you see, can be very restricting, say, an obstacle to your imagination. I'm more oriented into the abstractions of reality itself. The details that they come across, they're not descriptive, but they are just about light and brushwork and uh, colors. It's a, a path that I'm working on it to don't be descriptive, but to evaporate the form into light. Self-doubt and ego-driven anxieties can plague an artist, but Giovanni has a very different philosophy about the art that he makes. What I do is this. It's like a fisherman goes out to fish. He has all the gears in perfect condition, like uh, he wants it. That all my gear is uh, as I want it. And then uh, I go on the spot. If I get excited about what I see, I just have my best intention to do my best work. Now, do I know if I can catch the fish or not? I don't know. 
even the fisherman, he doesn't know if he's going to catch the fish or not. But, you know, you do the work anyway, and whatever happens, happens. What I can do is just be at my best. I'm centered in myself, I'm engaged in what I do, and I'm into the process, I'm loving the process. And I never know if I'm going to get a nice penny or not, but I don't, don't care about that. What I care about is the experience of having. And the experience of penny is going to enrich myself, even if I pay a bad penny. And that's all I can ask. So I just hope he'll continue to come here and do his paintings and um, be our friend. <laughs>